heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people Welcome to another Thursday Night Live program. We're coming to you here live from Thompsonville slash West Frankfurt, Illinois. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening and we appreciate your prayers and support of the ministry of 3ABN. Amen. Some of you have joined us just for the first time, maybe in the last few months. Some of you have been with 3ABN now. Let's see, this is 2018, so it's going to be 34 years yeah. since uh, uh, Danny listened to the impression of God and the Holy Spirit and decided to start the ministry of 3ABN. But anyway, thank you. How's your week been? I know here at 3ABN, it's uh, been a busy one every week. I don't, you know what? I don't know of any week that isn't busy around here. <laughs> that's and, life for everybody. Yeah, that's true. And I know you at home, you've probably had a busy week. And uh, we just thank you for carving this time out of your schedule to join with us. And it's always a blessing to uh, meet with you as our family. Yeah. Uh, Jill and I sit on this side of the, uh, we see a piece of glass and there's a camera lens that we're looking into right now. We can't see you, but we know you're there. <laughs> so we right. just appreciate when you call us, when you write us, when uh, 3ABN or uh, you send your letters or emails to or us. Or when we it's get to travel and we get to oh, meet Oh yeah, that's just mm -hmm. great. Camp meeting is a great thing too, <laughs> which is, when is that coming up? We should tell people just so you can mark it on your calendars. June 6 through 9 coming up. Good job. She mm -hmm. has all the information. Wednesday night through Sabbath, it's on the Three Angels Messages, and right. I'm excited about our upcoming camp meeting, and I'm excited about our program tonight and the I topic. Am. Yes. What is our topic this evening? We're talking about relationships. Who doesn't have a relationship? We all do, whether it's mm. in the church, at work, with your family, in your community. We're talking about building relationships not only with God as our Father, but building relationships with other people, with mm. spouses, family members, or girlfriends, or boyfriends, or co-workers, or people in the church, whatever. You know, and I'm excited about it, because we're coming up on next week is yeah, Valentine's, it's Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. And we think about that as the, the topic of love, but really, it's all about relationships. Yeah, it really is. And we don't want you to turn the TV off or turn the radio <laughs> off right now, because you're like, okay, I'm not married, or I don't need to hear about relationships, because like Jill said, we're all involved with relationships because we interact with people all the time. And uh, it's definitely a, a key thing to talk about this evening. And we have some special people with us this evening that are joining us, and they're not guests. They're part That's of our right. three ABN family and uh, great friends and great mentors. Mm -hmm. And we have sitting next to me Pastor John Lomacang. Good to be here, Greg. Here, Jill. Jill and my pastor, That's and right. uh, we appreciate you right. and uh, the ministry that you and your wife have together. Amen. And a special thing is, Pastor, you've got your wife sitting right next to you. Isn't That's that right. Special? That's the best person to have next to me talking about relationships. Amen. Yeah, but we appreciate both of you, Thank you. and uh, your hard work for the Lord. We know that uh, they are pulled, and it seems like a million directions. Yes, I know that's, that's exaggerating, sure. but I mean, they are pulled in lots of directions because they're also a conference pastor. Yeah. He is uh, an ambassador for 3ABN. He also does a lot of programming. And uh, your world evangelism director as well. So lots of different hats, but uh, we appreciate you. And Angie, we don't have you on, it seems like, near enough. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, working radio. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Yes, I work at, uh, here at 3ABN mm -hmm. Radio. And I do editing, um, quite a bit of editing. And I do host a program called Crossroads. Crossroads. Oh, it's yeah. It's a great program. Uh, it is. Oh, praise the Lord. And I have great guests. I have, Lord always give me amazing guests. Mm -hmm. And so I'm... I'm just privileged to be here and happy to be here for what, 14 years? Wow, 14 Has years. Has it been 14 years? 14 wow. years. Yeah. And you all have been married how many years? Going on 35. Yes. Wow. It's incredible. This yeah. year will be this 35. Year, wow. That makes our 15 seem kind of small. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm 
still excited exactly. about 50. Exactly. <laughs> I am too. Yeah, it's been great. It's good to have you on. So, Ms. go ahead. And, and Angie, I was just going to hmm. say, what a blessing a pastor's wife is. Oh, that's true. I, I know, Pastor John, oh, yeah. your leadership in the church is so vital and the, mm -hmm. the preaching and leading the flock. But Angie, I think yours is just as important. I agree. And you are, she's the best pastor's wife ever. Mm -hmm. um, she's Thank a woman you. of God. I agree. Oh, yeah. She's a woman who, <laughs> who listens to God, that's who right. listens to other people, who prays with and for people. And God has just blessed you with so many amazing gifts. And we are blessed uh -huh. to have you both as our pastoral mm -hmm. couple in the church. And, you know, we're going to talk about that, too, because as a pastor, if my wife didn't have her own relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. then our relationship wouldn't be as strong as it is. Because there are many days that I'm tired coming home after doing all the things oh, yeah. we talked about. Yes. And uh, I just really don't have time to feed myself spiritually. Mm -hmm. And my wife would get that candle and light the wick mm -hmm. spiritually, That's and good. then I would get nourished. And then I would end up standing up for an hour and a half when she's saying, I want to try to get to bed by 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's a praise the Lord. Mm. And I believe, personally, it just kind of on the topic of relationships, a lot of ministers could not be effective at what they do mm -hmm. if God didn't also anoint their wives. That's right. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I want everybody in the world to know who my wife is. That's mm -hmm. right. So we travel all the time together wherever we go. Because I know I've seen people that are uh, well known in the, in the, sp in the speaking and in, in, uh, visual world. And in many cases, I don't know who their wives are. Yeah. Um, but you know, I believe the Lord called us, chose us. Amen. And we'll talk about that more when we can talk about relationships. But yeah, I praise the Lord for it. And more we, the more we travel, uh, people recognize uh, her on 3ABN Radio. They mm. said, I listen to Crossroads. That's <laughs> which is kind of easier because when you drive, you can listen to radio, whereas you have to sit down and mm -hmm. watch television. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pastor, you have been in ministry for how many years? Is it about? Well, this is... Uh, 2018 mm -hmm. will be going into 31. 31, 31 years, yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's great. I'm just amazed by it. It's it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, amen. Yeah. yeah, it does go by quickly, doesn't it? Didn't even have a chance to get gray. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. You hide it well, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and then sitting next to you, Angie, is uh, Jason Bradley, yeah. who I consider my uh, my neighbor, and he's my office neighbor because my office is sort of at a diagonal, mm -hmm. and uh, you are the assistant to the general manager of Dare to Dream Network. <laughs> the I pen. have a little purple pen in my pocket. <laughs> I needed an ink pen before we started this program, and thanks to Jason who had two pens, <laughs> he handed me a pen, and it's purple, yeah. and guess what? It says Dare to Dream Network, and it has the contact information. Thank you, Jason. Good You're job. You're very welcome. You did a good job. <laughs> You're promoting, a great neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> promoting Dare to Dream. But it's, it's a blessing to have you on this evening. It's yeah. a blessing to be here. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that uh, relationships, as we were talking about earlier, and just a few minutes ago, is uh, it's with. The, I know you're not married, Jason, mm -hmm. but still we're all involved with people we're in contact with, whether it's co-workers, uh, people at church, um, yeah, friendships and things. It's important, isn't it? Absolutely. It's very important. I mean, it is our very being, you know, when we go back to creation. That's right. Um, and we take a look at Genesis chapter 1 mm. with verse 26. Let me turn there. Okay. And we're going to begin in 26 and, and go down to uh, verse 29. Genesis chapter 1. Well, that's the beginning of the Bible. Y yes, yes. Take it back <laughs> back to the beginning where that's it all good. began, <laughs> where it all started. What uh, were the verses? Know, are you there? 20, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 26. Oh, yeah. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion uh, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Mm. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the earth. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Mm -hmm. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, uh, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Yeah. So, like, God created us, mm -hmm. you know, to be in a relationship, to be yeah. married as well, yeah. to reflect his character to one another. Mm -hmm. um, and even with the, the uh, plants and, and herbs, 
he created them with seeds so they could be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so relationships are very important, whether it's networking, whether it's people you work with, whether it's uh, a girlfriend um, or marriage, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, very important. And I think ultimately, which we're also going to touch on this evening, is our relationship to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But the neat thing is his, his uh, want of having a relationship with us. Yes. And that's a beautiful thing, because as Jason is talking about, this is the Creator God who, you know, we could say would be like, well, so busy he wouldn't even notice us. But he does. He Amen. notices us, doesn't he? Amen. I just want to mention, put a plug in for Jason here at the moment. We kind of glossed over this, kind of quickly <laughs> saying, well, he's single right now. But I just want to say, Jason is an incredible man of God. Yes. Mm. Um, and it's so exciting to see the the way God's grown you. Yeah, I think of when you first came to 3ABN and just, making choices for God, but just at that time making choices. Hmm. And then to see God grow your walk yes. with Him and Amen. your time with Him and, mm. and you speaking the Word now, where oh. just a few years ago that wouldn't yeah. even happen. So, yeah. 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 so just see your relationship with yeah. God yeah. growing. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And Amen. we just love Jason here oh, and yeah. he's going to make a fabulous husband someday. Yeah. Amen. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Lord, thank you for that plug, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, you know, it's, I think going back to, you know, you building that relationship yeah. with God, I think yeah. that's a, that's just a, it's a beautiful thing because all of us, none of us have arrived, have we, Pastor? It's well, no. that sanctification process of that daily submitting to Christ mm -hmm. and we inviting Christ into our hearts. It's yeah. a daily process. It is a building that relationship. And relationships is everything. I mean, yes. not only in marriage, mm -hmm. but as you pointed out in church, yes. mm -hmm. uh, in your community, mm -hmm. uh, in your family. <laughs> and relationships are not easy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, when you, especially when you're a Christian, relationships are not based on um, a one-way dynamic. Relationships are always two-way. Mm. Yes. Now, the Lord, amazingly enough, when He talks about relationships, um, He loved us first. Mm. We oh, love Him good. because He first loved, loved us. us. That's, that's right. Amen. So when you think about relationships, if you want to have a genuine relationship, don't wait for the other person to love you. First, love them. Mm. And I thought in following the principle, wow. mm -hmm. relationships are, because some people might say, I don't, I don't, they don't like me, I don't like them. So I'm that's not going to love them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they don't like me, I don't like them. I'm not going to, and, and, I, and I'm always, I shudder when I hear Christians say that. They don't like me, I don't like them. I don't, I'm not going to be plastic, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Mm. Well, if you are a Christian and you don't like somebody because they don't like you, you are a hypocrite. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah that is good. Mm. Because, mm -hmm. because the true. first yeah. evidence of Christ in your life, the fruit of the Spirit is love. 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 The mm. first thing, mm. the first ingredient, and it's not different ingredients, it's not different fruits, mm -hmm. is one fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, patience. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned, and um, not only in our relationship as husband and wife, mm -hmm. but in, with people, uh, we have, and I just could go back a little bit, I'm going to use, uh, I know D. Hildebrand is not going to kill me because we have a great relationship, yeah. <laughs> but years ago. She's our production coordinator. She's production yeah, coordinator. Is. And D, D is always on the move. Mm -hmm. She's a type A person. Lot of energy. Type A, 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 A. <laughs> she's always on the move. She gets things done. Yes, she mm -hmm. That's what I love about D. Yeah, she's involved in the church too. Church treasurer. Oh, yeah. church, church, church treasurer. treasurer. She yeah. always gets it done and I could always rely on her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When she hears it, she's going to say, my pastor's talking about me. <laughs> love you, D. That's why I'm using this example <laughs> because I could use her. We have a great relationship. Yeah. Mm. But um, good. I remember years ago, uh, I think when Pastor CHS came here, mm. um, Dee was telling me something mm -hmm. that I already knew. And oh. he knew I knew it. But she was telling me all the details, and I just stood there, mm -hmm. and I listened to her. And he said, I appreciate that about you, Rabbi. Mm. She, you, you let her tell you what, you what to do, need. and you already know what to do. Mm. Oh, okay. But you didn't get upset. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people say, I know, you don't have to tell me that. That's right. yeah. And all of a sudden, and so he said to me, I like the phrase, he says, you let her do her job. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to let people be themselves mm -hmm. and not have to pre-design them mm -hmm. so that we could now in our construction and reconstruction of them say, well, now you're at a place where I could like you mm -hmm. or I could love you. And so what I want to begin by uh, saying is, um, mm. you, you started with the question, what why do relationships matter? And I think we should throw that around the circle. Mm, yeah. Because relationships, if you think about relationships, 
relationships matter because everything, the end result of everything, always begins with a relationship. That's good. And no man is an island. Yeah. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. Did you want to read the scripture? We have? Sure, yeah. absolutely. And we'll go to a little music and then we'll and then we'll into jump this. In. You mean we didn't start yet? No, we didn't start yet. <laughs> we did, Pastor, we, we did started. start it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't just tune in. Hopefully you started at the beginning. But let's turn to the Bible scripture here. First John 1, 7. Okay. Yeah, I love that. I love this oh, scripture. Oh, yeah, it's good. Me too. And you know what? We often quote mm. Pastor 1 John 1, 9. I mean, that's the right. one yeah. we almost mm -hmm. think of in 1 we'll John. Sins. If we confess mm -hmm. our sins, that's right. right, Angie. He's faithful and just to forgive us. But we're going to go back a couple verses, 1 mm -hmm. John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship Ooh. with one another. Mm -hmm. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Mm -hmm. Now that word fellowship in the Greek, Pastor, mm. koinonia, you want to mm -hmm. unpack that for us. What does that mean, fellowship? Koinonia is a, a Greek word that is more powerful than friendship. Mm -hmm. It, mm. it includes friendship, it includes relationship, but it doesn't just include it there. Fellowship, uh, or the word koinonia, recognizes that we are both walking in the light. Mm. It doesn't say, I'm in the light and you're not mm. in the light. It says, I'm in the light and you're in the light. And what happens, it creates a connection there, a connection that is a Christ connection. If I'm walking in the light and you're walking in the light, there's something that should be different about that than just, well, I don't know if you're walking in the light or if I'm walking. And so this is a demand. This is literally a condition for Christians. And what's beautiful about that is if you want the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you from sin, mm. you're wow. koinonia. I'd never processed no, that yeah. before. Mm -hmm. It comes before the verse. I right. see that. Your yes. koinonia with me yes. has to be godly. Yep. Yes. My koinonia with you has to be godly. Mm -hmm. wow. I can't have an, I can't have an a brash relationship with you in a Christian setting because we're both walking in the light, light. Yes. Mm. and say Jesus has cleansed me from sin. When we get down to forgiveness and all that later on, we'll mm -hmm. talk about that even more. Yeah. Wow. So it's in essence saying, because you say you walk in the light, you have, a, you have an obligation to love me Mm. Yes. And I can't take the I can't take the obligation away from me because if I say I walk in the light, I have an obligation yeah. to love you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So this is an obligatory wow. terminology rather than a casual one like your grocer or the ma or the mechanic or the mm -hmm. male person, right. mm -hmm. you know, whether male or female. It's a deeper word. It's a word that demands <laughs> that we re that we reflect Christ, mm -hmm. not because the other person has or hasn't but because we say we walk on the light. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, well, that's great. Well, that is. That's powerful. Wow. I'm so mm. excited about tonight's oh, yeah, program too. on building relationships. And we know that God wants each one of us to walk in the light. That's Whether right. you're, I don't know where you are today. Maybe you're feeling like your relationships are fractured. The ones in your life, mm. in your family, with your coworkers, maybe you're struggling. Tonight, we're going to give keys and principles for building those relationships, for healing those broken relationships relationships mm. and no matter how good your relationship is because you know sweetie mm. I consider we have a good marriage yes I agree but God can always make it better That's you right. know no matter That's how right. good your relationship is yeah. God wants to make it even better and it requires work too it does yeah. That's right. That's for sure. so let's go to our music and okay. then we'll jump into why do relationships matter um, we have Sam Ocampo with oh, us oh that's great and he's going to be playing a song he's an incredible pianist he is. we have a CD mm -hmm. of his I love yes and the song he's doing tonight is it took a marriage medley.
Wow. Amen. Amen. He certainly gets into his music and he enjoys it. Can't you yeah. see that? Well, That's that right. was inspiring. It took a miracle medley. Thank you, Mr. Sam Ocampo. Amen. It's great. And all relationships, take if they a miracle. take miracle. You know, they all <laughs> take a miracle, exactly. as it were. We can't take credit for that. that was Pastor Loma King said, boy, that's a great segue right there. It <laughs> took a miracle. So thank you, Pastor. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> great song, though. Amen. We appreciate it. What a gift. So if you're just joining us, we have mm. Pastor John Loma King. That's right. His wife, Angie, mm -hmm. and Jason Bradley Amen. with us. We're talking about building relationships. And mm -hmm. as we get into that, why do relationships even matter? Someone could say, well, I don't really need relationships. I don't care about relationships. Why do they matter? I can see Angie's thinking there. Why do they matter, <laughs> Angie? <clears throat> it does matter to have a relationship. It matters to God. It matters to us to have a relationship with you, mm -hmm. with um, people we work with, people we go to church with. Because in heaven, we will have a, your relationship, <laughs> won't we? That's true. Um, when we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I just believe to have a relationship here on earth is, is preparing us for our heavenly relationship. That's good. Mm -hmm. So it, I just feel it's very important to have one. I think it was good too what you mentioned that uh, it's important to God. Yeah. Mm. You know, and that's that's key actually. It is. And like you're saying, this is a preparation for heaven. Yeah. You know, in heaven we won't have different. Okay, so this part of oh, town no. doesn't like this part of town no way. of heaven. <laughs> no. That. Yeah. No we'll all be neighbors and friends and in a yes. yeah, the great multitude together. <laughs> Pastor. And everything is about relationships. It is. Yes. I mean, the, the Bible describes the church as the body. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and. Have you ever hit your pinky before? I have. Actually, I have I a little blood blister under this one right now on this pinky right there. Okay. <laughs> now, you okay. know Not when that happened. Not asking for sympathy. <laughs> no, but when that happened, yes. your whole body felt it. Sure. Whole, oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. And so in relationships, you know, Romans 14, 7 says, for, no one of, for none of us lives to himself. That's mm. right. Mm. And no one dies to himself, which yes. means everything that we do in life and even when we die, somebody is affected by it. Well, that's yes. true. And so... Uh, the reason I use a pinky as an example because we often think of the small pinky mm -hmm. or the tiny toe, but man, they, the smaller toe will bring you more pain yeah. than the big toe. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the small things in relationships mm. bring you greater pain than the things we think are the big things. Mm -hmm. So for example, what would be something maybe small? I mean, it could be for each person to their own, but what do you think would be something? Well, I think that we categorize it as small, but in okay. fact it isn't. Okay. That's good. Mm, that's good that's the point I want to make. True. We okay. sometimes categorize things as small, but they're but really they're not. not small. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Like somebody might say, well, I could do my job without even talking to you. <laughs> okay. Oh, <yeah. laughs> that's true. I don't need to talk to you. I go to work. I'm doing my work. I, why do I have to be kind to you? I'm just trying to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people do that in, in, in companies, in Christian, in mm. Christian churches. I mean, we've been in churches where, honey, we, we've seen relationships. <laughs> yeah. Well, you spoke about once when, well, I remember Pleasure. this, in one of our churches, a lady was so upset with the deacon, she brought a baseball bat to beat him up. To church? To church. To church. She wow. brought a baseball bat Louisville to church. Louisville Slugger, yeah. yes. A little baseball bat. And little she announced yeah. on entrance, yeah. I'm going to beat up the head deacon. Yes. Oh, my. <laughs> in church. In wow. church. Wow. So these are obviously two Christians. Yeah. Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And um, mm. she kept that bat until after mm. Sabbath school. Yeah. Went home, took the bat, came back, and but the deacon still had two other deacons around him for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so afraid. But let me go back to the little th yes. the pinky. little thing, the pinky mm -hmm. thing. It is what we define as insignificant that's often significant. Yeah. Mm. It's what we say really doesn't matter. And I go back to the example, somebody might say, I don't like Jay, but I ain't in Jay's department. So I don't care about Jay. I'm in production. Jay is in Data Dream. Mm -hmm. I'll work with him, but I don't have to be his friend. Mm. And when you're working in an organization, that is not an insignificant thing. That person might say, I could still function without being nice to Jay. Mm. I don't have to talk to Angie. Mm. I work with the, at the same company, but I don't have to talk to her. Mm -hmm. I don't have to act like I, I'm all crazy about her. Well, so we might think that that's insignificant in functioning in our capacity of our job, but when you refocus that, Mm. Uh, let's use the peephole as example. I have all these crazy the what? examples. The peephole. Oh, peephole. Okay. Look through. The peephole is small, mm -hmm. but what's on the other side of that is huge. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're just looking at it from a small perspective. Mm. If you open the door, you'll see that what's on the other side is bigger than what you thought was insignificant. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we keep the door of relationships closed because we prefer looking at people through the peephole of our preferences. Mm -hmm. So we say, I'm just going to keep this real with you 
I don't like you, Jill, so let's just, just keep it real. You know, you do your job, I do my job, let's keep it real, because I don't like how you deal. And, but, mm. but, you know, I love the Lord, you love the Lord, so let's just, we don't have to be friends down here, but when we get to heaven, maybe things will work out better. Mm. I've heard people, and I'm not using far off examples, I've heard people mm. say that. Yes. Mm -hmm. In big churches, yeah. the bigger the church, sometimes the more split it is. Yes. And even in little churches. Even in little even. churches. Oh, yeah. Don't you think that that mm. shows a heart issue? You know, yes, we can does. say, okay, this is a sure. little pinky issue or this is an insignificant issue, but don't you think that that mm. actually shows something is wrong with me mm -hmm. spiritually? So our yeah. relationship For to God. For me to struggle. So that means you're right, sweetie. Mm. My relationship with God is somehow disconnected. If my relationship with other people is fractured or fragmented, that means there's an issue with my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm going to have Angie on that very note read Matthew 22, verse Good. 37 to 39, because all relationships relationships are based on two principles. Okay. All relationships, Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39, is based on these two principles. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. So mm -hmm. hopefully you're joining us with us at home. Please turn your Bibles. Yes. Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Mm. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. I'm going to just mm. comment on this and throw it back out there because yeah. I don't want Jay to be out there on the periphery. <laughs> now, verse 37 mm. is huge mm -hmm. because it says, love the Lord your God with how much? All. All, all, all. all. all if time. you love him with all, what's left to love your neighbor? Now, this is huge. Just grab that. If you love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all yeah. means he's got it all. So what's left to love your neighbor? This is powerful. If he has it all, you are now loving your neighbor through him. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. That's right. Yeah. Boy, yeah, that's you're, good. You're, if he has your heart, your mind, your soul, mm -hmm. you're loving your neighbor through him, which makes the love to your neighbor divine, mm -hmm. not human. Because you gave the Lord everything, your heart, your mind, your soul. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we try to love our, our neighbor naturally. And when we try to love somebody naturally, we pick at all their flaws. Mm -hmm. But when we love them through Christ, mm -hmm. we can't pick at all their flaws. Mm -hmm. So there's principles. Loving the Lord, and I've used the scripture a thousand times. So relationships are based on two principles. Give everything to God, and if you do give everything to God, yeah. then it makes it, it, makes it divine. Yeah. To love your neighbor. Wow. And who's your neighbor? <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Jason, you have your fingers in multiple yeah. spots in your Bible. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was actually, those were two of the verses oh, that, oh, wow. that I had okay. written down as well. Okay. But, you know, relationships are so very important. They we are. see how the devil tries to divide and conquer. And that's, he True. wants to put an end and put a wedge in between our relationship with others, with God. He breaks up the family unit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we see back in the beginning of time when he uh, was a serpent mm -hmm. and uh, he tempted Eve to eat yeah. the fruit. Mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to separate her from God and, and separate that relationship. Right. True. Um, we see when you know, he was in heaven as Lucifer, mm -hmm. and he desired to be worshipped and, and all of that, and he deceived one-third of the angels. Yeah. He wanted to separate that relationship between them mm -hmm. and God. That's good. Um, so we see how important relationships are, and when we truly surrender, as this is uh, mm. speaking to these verses here in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40, mm -hmm. um, loving God uh, with all of our heart, um, you know, love, all of our motives, we should be motivated yeah. by love. That's good. Um, so when we are truly motivated by love, we're going to be selfless as Christ is selfless. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to be selfish mm -hmm. where we have ulterior motives mm -hmm. and, and doing things for the wrong, wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, how we love is, is very important. How we conduct ourselves in relationships is very important. Mm. Um, and our walk with God is of the utmost importance. You know, because that's a good point, Jason. You just touched on something. Just, it just popped in my head. We may want to talk about this in a little bit or now. But it, um, I think even when we walk through, let's say, here we have Walmart or we're at the gas station, we may not know them by name who's pumping gas just across right. from us or whatever, but I think even how we conduct ourselves, mm -hmm. if a person, you know, if, if 
if I got mad at the gas pump and started slamming on the gas pump, or, <laughs> or let's say you know someone's in the car and I'm yelling at them or slamming my car door, well, the person on the pump over there that doesn't know me from Adam is going to say, "Oh boy, I don't know that man." Oof, there's man, I don't know him. Him. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I tell you, just how we conduct ourselves, yeah. even if we don't even say a word, that's right. We're representing. We want someone to say, "Wow, man, something about that guy over yes. there isn't that nice?" Yeah. You know. So sometimes just a greeting like, "Hello, hey, how's your day going?" Yes. You know, it can be just. Yeah, something every, to, every, yeah. go ahead, Jason. No, 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 you, okay. Every, everybody exerts an influence, whether yeah. it's for good or for bad. Mm -hmm. So exactly what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know how you're impacting somebody's life. Oh. Yeah, you're right. I have a quote here. I write my favorite Ellen White quotes mm. in my, the, the front of my Bible. In the front. Mm -hmm. This is from Ministry of Healing, 469 and 470. It says, what a man is has more influence than what he says. Beautiful. So mm. And then it says, mm. the strongest argument, and we know this quote, the strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the strongest argument isn't even the words that we speak, no. but it's what we are, who we are yeah, as a yeah, person. Character. And it could be only one time that we meet them, or we have the yes. relationships where like church members, co-workers, yeah. family members, that's lifelong. Yeah, it's all important. Yeah, sure. Let's look at keys mm. or steps to okay. building relationships. Okay. It's good. We've been laying some foundation mm -hmm. work yes. here about relationships, but let's look at some keys. So if I were to say time, is time important in a relationship? Oh, yeah. And Ooh. what what would you say about that if we think about time in a relationship? Okay, honey, let's talk about time. <laughs> 30, yeah, 35 <laughs> years you all have been married. So See, now that's about time. time. And we're so busy, you know, mm -hmm. especially you, you're our life is so busy. Go, go, go. Yes. We have to make time mm -hmm. for each other. Mm -hmm. we when have is our to. special time? Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Not an hour on Thursday. We try to guard Thursday evenings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here you are doing a live this evening. Yeah, yeah, but you're doing right? it together. That's right. yeah. different. <laughs> That's right. good. Yeah. That's okay. But Even we, Sundays sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. take us for us. Mm -hmm. It's good though. You're, what so you're doing, you're being specific. Time. You're specific. We have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we celebrate. Don't we like to celebrate? We celebrate love. That's good. Valentine's. I mean, we celebrate anniversaries, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All every year, our anniversary, we always do something special. We celebrate birthdays. birthdays. Mm -hmm. You know, when my wife's birthday come around, mm -hmm. uh, we celebrated your birthday mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. January. And um, amen. And with family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because those are the things that are built. Those are time elements. Yeah. Some people might say it's not quantity, but quality. I don't agree with that. Okay. Quality is good, but let's put that in the context because I've seen relationships break up because people have said, workaholics, I've never seen anybody on their deathbed say, I wish I worked longer. Yeah. Mm, you've never seen that. I've oh, never heard about it. Never heard it, yeah. I've never heard anybody say that. Yeah. But they've said, I wish I spent more time with my kids. Mm -hmm. I wish I spent more time with my family. Yeah. I wish I spent more time with my wife or my husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I had one more day. Mm -hmm. and, and so the thing that you often put off for the rainy day, yeah. That rainy day would never come. I heard a terrible, terrible story. It's a sad story, but it's about time. Mm, about, time. Okay. about a man who had particularly bought, remember that story? He bought a specific uh, garment for his wife. Mm. And he was planning for that to be on a special occasion. And one day, he, his neighbor uh, saw him leaving the house and he said, well, what is that you have? It's this garment that I'm taking with me. And he explained, we were putting this aside for a rainy day. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was on his way to the funeral parlor. Oh, wow, for his wife. So he'd never yeah. given it to her? He, they never mm. had the time to use it. Wow. Because they were planning for a rainy day. Mm. So we are of the opinion, as C.D. Brooks, God, he's resting in Jesus now, told me years ago, he said, when you get older and all you have are memories mm. and pictures, make sure that both of you are in them. Mm. Oh, wow. That's and we've got, <laughs> we got like 100,000 pictures. <laughs> Thank you to the di digital technology. Amen. But we do spend time, and, and time cool. together gives you a chance, and we know this, to iron out the comfortable and the uncomfortable yes. things. Mm -hmm. That's what a relationship is all about. Mm -hmm. Relationships, and I'm speaking right now of marriage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But this also makes a difference. If you spend time with em employees mm -hmm. out, outside of work, mm -hmm. if you spend time with church members outside of work service, like yes. for socials or Saturday night or outings, you begin to see them on a different plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you do that in relationships, you build a stronger marriage which we have a stronger marriage. Every year our marriage gets stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's going to be challenged. But if you remember that 
that time is given by us, mm -hmm. given to us by God to build on the things that matter. And then to also address the things that are hurtful, mm -hmm. that yeah. are injurious, mm -hmm. and find solutions to it. And we have done that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So time really matters. Mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on time, Jason? I think that time is very precious. And it's something that you can't get back. Never. That's uh, true. Um, yeah. So <laughs> you have to seize every moment, seize yes. every opportunity. Um, and because you never know when it'll present itself again. You know, it's just like accepting the Lord as your personal Savior. Mm -hmm. Now is the time. Now is the time. Yeah. Your day is not, you don't know what could happen in the next five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, let alone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so time is very precious. And we're going to be held accountable with, as to what we did oh, with our time. Yes, we are. You, know, you, you see these dates on, I was recently in a, a cemetery because there was a funeral. Mm -hmm. And you see these dates, 1975 to 2017 or whatever. Young person. The beginning date and the end date, you know, don't hold as much significance as dash. that dash in yeah. between. Yeah. What did you do with your time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, did you spend your time sharing the love of Christ with others? Did you send, spend your time cultivating relationships with people? Did you spend your time leading people to Christ? Mm -hmm. Or did you spend your time leading them away from Christ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, time is something that is extremely valuable. It is. Um, mm -hmm. And we have to use it uh, to bring God all the glory. Well, I'm thinking about, you know, coworkers, you know, here at work at 3 ABN, like we mentioned earlier, this is busy. So I'm guilty of this. I'm running down the hallway. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And I'm already past them. And going to my office and my uh, staff, you know, I'm like, hey, how's it going? You going good? Okay, now this is what we need to do today. And, you know, sometimes I need to say, oh, how you doing? Yeah. How was mom? Yeah. How was dad? How was your weekend? What did you do? Instead of just like, hey, doing all right? Yep, good. Okay, now yeah, let's yeah. get to business. Being, you know, and so it's very easy, even in just our relationships mm -hmm. at work, uh, that it's easy to get so caught up in good things, you know, because 3 ABN is doing a great work around the world. But time is important, I think, about a relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. As husband and wife, I know that uh, for us, uh, we've, Tuesday night. Yeah, we've carved yeah, out yeah. Tuesday uh, night. Good. I would say 99% of the time we're able to pull that off. And, that means um, no cell phone, yeah, hey, that's no, right. no email, no phone call, Good. no text mm -hmm. during that time. It's just Greg and I, and that's mm -hmm. precious. Yes. Yeah, and it's a time, like you were mentioning, of communication, mm -hmm. you know, especially. You know, we communicate all the time, but actually, you know, talk about different things. And it's mm -hmm. nice True. to be able to do that because time and talking to each other is, well, we enjoy that. It's a lot of oh, fun. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's for sure. Go but, ahead, Jason. Well, I guess we'll never get you out on the basketball court <laughs> on Tuesday I was thinking the Tuesday. Tuesday. You too. These no, guys. Why? <laughs> to the gym on Tuesday. No, no, yeah. well, that's their night. Basketball, yeah, it's fun. I played basketball on the basketball court when I first came here about oh. 18 years or so oh. ago. And um, I, this is no excuse because everyone's been injured there, but I had a severe <laughs> sprain and I said, you know what? After that's I hobbled it. around for weeks and weeks and weeks on end, I said, you know, I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I should at least attend and cheer you guys on. So anyway, no, once you it, oh, that's no, right. No, that's your oh, time. baby, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Thank right. You. So okay. I won't be. Yeah. We almost got you in trouble. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, I guess we can't edit. Okay. <laughs> Another. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, okay. Another thing with with time is you can't really get to know somebody unless you spend, spend time, time with them. With them. You're not yeah. going to get mm -hmm. to know God unless you spend time right. in His Word, That's getting right. to know His mm -hmm. likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and it's dating true. and and courting or yeah. dating or whatever. You're not going to get to know the individual that you're courting unless you spend time with mm -hmm. them. You have to learn what they like, what they don't like, mm. things that. Uh, you know, will frustrate them mm -hmm. and, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're only going to find that out by time and communication. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, well, go go ahead. ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, Angie, I was thinking too, you know, even when we communicate, like what Jason is saying, yeah. you know, if, if let's say in, in a rela marriage relationship, you know, you and Pastor John, you know, if only one does the talking and only one does the listening, that doesn't work either. That's communication, yes. Exactly. But it takes one listening for a while, one talking, then the opposite. And I think that's key it in is. a relationship, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We talk all the time, don't mm -hmm. we? We laugh together. That's good. Which is so good. It is. Every day, I, we have a laugh. We laugh with each other, about yeah. each other, or oh, about other people. About other people. Yeah. <laughs> it's always. Yeah. Now we know. Yeah. <laughs> no, we always have something to laugh uh, and about. And that's important, actually. Yeah, laughter is medicine, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And we laugh, we pray, mm -hmm. we read our Bibles together. 
it's a full circle. We have this mm -hmm. full yeah. social, mental, everything that's together, good. don't we? Yeah, and it's a We even go to forward. Walmart together. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Even to the mall. Mm -hmm. To the mall together. <laughs> that's good. Go, go I, with me. Just, matter of fact, was just this morning, uh, or maybe last night I said, Honey, do you realize like every day of the week we're in each other's space? Oh, you do. Mm. How many couples could survive that? Yeah. We have through the years worked at four companies together. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Before incredible. in New York, mm. when we were in the we were second dating. world, we worked at two companies sure. together. Mm -hmm. We were on a heritage singers together every single day for two years in the yeah. same space, exactly yes. not an inch between us. Yeah. You know, just oh. I'm speaking sp specifically just Right. In okay. the same space, mm -hmm. here at 3BN, every day together. Mm -hmm. We travel together. Whenever I travel, she goes with me. Mm -hmm. How many couples could survive that? Yeah. Mm. And uh, some people get married to find out how much time they could spend Step apart. Part. Wow, mm -hmm. how sad. And they talk yeah. about quality time. Yeah. Yeah. So I would put a plug here for the husbands. Mm. Don't just look at your wife as a quality time person. But um, look, at your life, look at your wife as a person who requires your, your breathing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your touch. Yeah. Like, uh, we would come back on the plane just mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. days ago, mm -hmm. and I went like this. Oh, yeah, she said, why did. are you doing that? I said, yeah. I just want to touch your face. Yeah. Yeah. She said, touch my face. I said, could you touch my face? <laughs> and it's like, he it's did, amazing. out of nowhere. I'm like, that? yeah. Because we sometimes just hug, sure. but we have the, we have the yeah. permission. Mm -hmm. so right. Just to be more intimate. Can I just yeah. touch your face? And sometimes okay. I pinch your earlobe. Can I pinch your earlobe? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know? But I'm just saying. But well, we do, we do. And those are those are those time moments that you look back so on. Yeah. And then sometimes my wife will walk up to me and say, "My love cup is empty. Can I get a hug?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, those are, that's time. And I'm talking about marriage right now. Yeah, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. In the intimate sense, but in the same way, we could build relationships. Um, with our other church members. Mm -hmm. And intimacy takes on a spiritual. Because mm -hmm. remember, uh, there's a principle in the Bible. Let's look at this together. Um, yeah. Love is reciprocal. That's the thing yes. I'm going to point out. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke 631. Anybody can read that. Whoever Luke gets it first. Luke 631. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Mm. Mm. Amen. So when you think about that in the context of a church, mm -hmm. Do you want people to respect you? Absolutely. What should you yeah. do? Yeah. Respect, respect them. them. That's right. Reciprocal. Or just like this person you mentioned earlier, they probably wouldn't like a baseball bat taken after them. Like this one person was taken after <laughs> exactly. the head deacon. They yeah. Wouldn't like yeah, exactly. Good Brought back to them. Mm. Yeah. Good and point. then there's some church members that just, the other thing, and, and we, we're talking about all kinds of relationships. That's right. So yes. the program is not, you know, just we're going to go in and out of different mm -hmm. relationships. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Jump in at any time, anybody. But, um, as, church, as Christians, let me just not say church members, because sure. membership in, in Christianity are not the same. Yes, that's right. But as Christians, we should make it a high obligation of our own to iron out relationships with each other. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. That's you know, right. It's important. It's important. Mm -hmm. I've sat down as pastor in office with people that are just at odds, and one wants to really reconcile, mm -hmm. but the other one holds a standard higher than God. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, because the Lord says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive. Mm -hmm. yes. But the other person has such a high, no, but you hurt me. But I, no, I, don't want, I don't want to have anything to do with you. No, and the other one is just crying out, but please yeah. forgive me. I'm yeah. so sorry. I, I didn't mean that. I, I apologize. Mm -hmm. And the other one is just, no, don't want to pray with you. Don't want to touch. And then, but they go on to sing every Sabbath. Worship every Sabbath, work for the Lord, and I say, this is something seriously wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happened here? As you want people to do to you, yeah. do also to them. It's a reciprocal principle. Mm -hmm. Let's stop and mm, talk about good. that a minute because yeah, this is good. huge. Is, In relationships, mm -hmm. there are True. many people who have ought against someone else, yes. who yes. struggle. And yeah. maybe at home, you're the person who has the hard heart, we could say, as it were, and mm -hmm. saying, I don't want to forgive so-and-so because they hurt me too deeply. Mm -hmm. Because what they did to me, I just can't get over. Let's talk from that perspective first, right. and then we'll go from the other perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, what, if, what do people do if they want to reconcile and the other person doesn't want to. Yeah. But what, let's talk about the person with a hard heart, the person who says, I can't forgive. I can't let go of that pain that someone else did to me. Jay. I think that person needs to take a look at their relationship with God and, and reflect yes. upon their life, yes. reflect on their life and, and think about how God mm -hmm. has forgiven them That's right. so many times for the things that, that they've done. You know, they need 
to, uh, I guess, have a humbling experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's sad, but mm -hmm. they don't. It's good. Mm -hmm. They don't look at their lives. It's a lot of them don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's everybody else's fault. Everybody type of thing. else's yeah. fault. Yeah, because I have family people, people in our family that's like that too. Mm. Yeah, family members, which is relation, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. yeah, and, and I've struggled. Coming from a too. big family, we yeah. have like an eight. Oh yeah, she had eight mm -hmm. siblings. Right. She has yeah. seven now. One is right. deceased. Yeah. But yeah, through the years, yeah. I mean, you could talk about some of that. You don't have to be specific, but absolutely those stubborn, strong, that don't want to talk to you, strong-headed ones. That's like, mm -hmm. Lord, how and people like this in my family? I pray for them because mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it myself. I just have to ask the Lord for wisdom and guidance. Right, honey? Mm -hmm. That's the only way to do it. And ask the Lord and, and just keep praying for them. Lord, help them, help them. I know I was working at a job and <laughs> in California, and one lady, my supervisor was there. Remember I told you about this, honey? Mm -hmm. And my supervisor came in, and this lady was so awful to me. Another co-worker. A okay. co-worker wow. was mm. Absolutely. Just awful. hateful then to you. Yes. Mm. She came there and she says, Angela, you ah. she was just oh, mm. just yelling at me. And Thank my you. supervisor was there that day. She didn't work in that office, but she was there that day. And I, I didn't say a word. I was like, why is she saying this to me? That's not true. I just kept quiet. <laughs> and after the lady left, she just stormed out of there. My supervisor says, Angela. I'm so proud of you. You didn't mm -hmm. say anything mm -hmm. to rebuttal her. She said, I know how that lady is. I know how mean she is. But she says, I'm, she says I don't know how you took all that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's good to just keep quiet. It's mm -hmm. good. Because sometimes when you want to just, you want to say something and get back, just keep your mouth shut. What the Bible says is soft, soft answer. Soft answer. Turns away wrath. Turns away wrath. Yeah. Yes, yes. I could have yelled at her and screamed, but I didn't. This was years ago. But tell the young end result, though. I got a raise. <laughs> 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 wow. I got a raise. Mm. The next week, my boss gave me a raise. It was a blessing. Now, I know in my own experience, and I hate to say this, but I've even had that, that hard heart yeah. at times. You know, yes. you get hurt. Yes. And it's like, oh man, yes. you know, I feel that I'm in the right, but I've mm -hmm. had that hard heart. And that's where in my own personal experience, mm -hmm. I've had to say, God, please take that stony heart yes. and give me a heart of flesh. Mm. That's or, the scripture I got open. Amen. Okay, <laughs> go for it. Uh, there you go. It's amazing. <laughs> Ezekiel, what is that, 36? 36. Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead, read it. <laughs> it says, because I love this, because oh, we can't change our heart. No, we right? can't. You can say, God, my heart is hard, and yes. I can't change it, but you can. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of the gospel. Amen. God does it. That's Ezekiel right. 36 says, 26, I will give you a new heart and put yes. a new spirit within you. Mm -hmm. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh. We all have a heart of stone mm -hmm. at one time or another in our lives. I will take that heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you mm -hmm. and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you will dwell in the land I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. I will be your God. It's God beautiful. is the one who does it. Mm -hmm. and I interrupted your no, story. No, no, it's great. No, I mean, it's <laughs> it. But just that, uh, yeah, for me, in my yeah. personal experience, is just praying that to God, saying, God, mm -hmm. you have to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel like forgiving. I know I should, but by faith, I'm going to go out there and say, yeah, God, put that forgiving spirit in me. Yes. Take my old, stony old heart and make it something soft and pliable. Mm -hmm. And then the Psalms 51, create in me a clean heart. Mm, doesn't say right. Greg Morricone creates a clean heart inside no, of himself. Right. Nah, <laughs> not at all. It's God that creates it. So it's just praying those scriptures to God. And do you know, God does a miracle. Going back to that song, right? Samuel Campbell took played. Took a miracle. It took right? a miracle. Mm -hmm. God works that miracle. So like as Jill's mentioning, if you're that person that has just, boy, someone has wronged you in a terrible way, mm -hmm. is to just say, God, boy, I, I want to forgive. I need to forgive. Yeah. Take that old heart out of me. Mm -hmm. Give me a heart of flesh. There's Jason. A, and I'm going to try and read this really quick. No, you're uh, fine. <laughs> no, go for it. Yeah. The, the parable of the unforgiving servant. This Oops. is found in Matthew chapter 20. Chapter 18, excuse me. Verse Matthew 21. Chapter 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. verse, starting with verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? 
up to seven times? <laughs> Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, mm. but up to 70 times seven. Mm. Wow. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. <laughs> but as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold mm. with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released mm. him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Mm. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, mm. pay me what you owe. My, my. <laughs> so his fellow servant fell down mm. at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Mm. And he would not, he, and he would not, but went and threw him uh, into prison till he should pay the debt. Wow. So when his fellow servants saw that had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have com have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? Mm. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. God has forgiven us of so many sins yes. and wow. so many things that we've done mm. yes. that it would be crazy for us not to forgive somebody mm -hmm. who's wronged us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, and that, that parable speaks to that. Uh, it's powerful. Mm. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's a great passage, isn't it? You know, forgiveness is divine. Forgiveness Amen. is not human. That's mm -hmm. right. Because I, if I'm looking at the examples that are given here, it comes back, you know, not only the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, but it's long-suffering, long suffering, mm. gentleness, meekness, patience. Mm -hmm. and, I th and, and I use the word, I think, the principle here is less of an I think, but Lord, there's a quote, and I'll, I'll share it, maybe in the second hour, Good. Okay. about how, and I, and I appreciate what you said, we can make a change. Mm -hmm. Really, we can choose to make a change. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the change is made by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because what you read in Ezekiel 37? Right. Mm -hmm. 36. 36. He says, I will. Mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. Notice there was nothing on Ezekiel's That's part. Right. You're right. Everything that was happening, the Lord says, I will put a new, I will do, I will. Yeah. See, it's no longer my will, but His will. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's what He does. Right. If, you, if there's first a willing heart, I think it's 2 Corinthians 8, verse 5. I'll find the reference here in a moment. But if we are willing and obedient, yes. Isaiah 1, verse 16 to 8, mm -hmm. if we are willing and obedient, That's we will right. eat of the fruit of the Lamb. But if we refuse and rebel, we'll be devoured by the sword. So we have to be willing and obedient. Mm -hmm. And I think in the second half of the program, we're going to talk about how to be willing mm -hmm. and obedient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how to be willing. Amen. Yeah, That's so exciting. Yeah. I love Philippians 2. It is God yeah. who works in you, both, yeah. both to will and to do of His good pleasure. And I say this verse all the time, but I believe it with all my heart, because God gives us the desire to follow Him. He gives right. us the desire to even change. Mm. And then He gives us the power. Right. So it's God all the way. And you're right, Pastor There's John, it's us choosing mm -hmm. to make a choice. And just saying, God, will you come in? Will you change me? Will you give me the heart of flesh? I'm so excited. We have a whole nother hour to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Building relationships, what God wants to do in your life at home and in our life mm -hmm. too. So praise the Lord for that, sweetheart, mm -hmm. that he wants to do that, whether it's church, coworkers, mm -hmm. marriage, spouse, right. whatever he wants to work. We'll be right back the second hour.
Welcome back to our second hour, Thursday Night Live, as we talk about, I was going to say the topic of forgiveness, but we're in the <laughs> middle of forgiveness, talking about building relationships. Mm, that's right. Whether it's a rela relationship with your spouse or a family member or a coworker, someone in the church. God wants us to build relationships with each other as it brothers is. and sisters and with Him as our God and Savior. But before we went to the end of last hour, we were just talking about forgiveness, mm, how mm. if I have a hard heart, against my brother or sister, God can replace that with a soft heart, Amen. with a heart of flesh. And just before we went to the break, Pastor John, you said you had a, a quote to share. Did you find that quote? Well, first, it's a, it's a scripture that I want to start oh, with. Okay. And then the Thank thing you. about not being able to change ourselves. Okay, good. And I'll, I'll have that after, maybe after the song. But uh, talking about willingness. Yes. Because in order to be able to resolve relationships in any capacity, whether very difficult or very easy, um, I would say nothing's really easy if you yeah. choose not to resolve it. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. And somebody might say, well, it's just one small thing that bothers me about you. Well, it's not really small if it bothers them. Sure. All that digressing language. But uh, yes. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 12, this is the Good. one I want to read. Uh, and. Um, since I have my big iPad, you might wonder what we have in our hands. It's our iPad, so we sometimes <laughs> fiddle with it, so bear with us. It's nice having that, isn't it? I tell yeah. you so much. Looking up scripture oh, wow. and finding things. Oh, it's a what was that again? Second Corinthians? Second Corinthians 8 and verse 8. 12 okay. to 14. And this talks about how, how if, you're, if you're lacking something in a relational way and the other person has it, then let that strength that they have become uh, a tool that uh, could be a blessing to you oh, that's and great. then vice versa. Mm. Good. If I'm lacking patience and you're a patient person, then help me be patient. Mm. If I'm a person of great skill and you're lacking that, then help me with the skill. Mm. I'll help you with the skill. Mm. But, but here's the key. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 12, for if there is first a willing mind, mm. Mm. a lot of people, you have to be willing to have a good relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. Because not everybody have all the skills and the mm -hmm. tools. Now we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit is one thing, yes. but tools, yeah. you, know, some, you have to have tools. And we've learned, we still learn how to use our tools in relationships. Mm -hmm. If those tools are not working, if you don't know the tools in a good relationship, then you can't make it work. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says in verse 13, for I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, mm. but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your Amen. lack, that there, wow. be, that there may be equality. Mm. So what happens mm. is my wife has certain gifts that I don't have. Yeah. Yeah. I have certain gifts that she doesn't mm -hmm. have. And in that relationship, you know, somebody might say, which one of you is the fire? Which one of you is the water? What did your mother always say? <laughs> <laughs> when one is the fire, one must be the water to cool the fire. That's, mm. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can't have a, two hotheads hot in a relationship. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you might say, honey, you know, if I'm going to say something, I'm not going to say the right thing, so you handle this. <laughs> <laughs> you get my point? Yeah. yeah. You know each other's strengths yeah. yes. and weaknesses, weaknesses, and you guard for that. That's mm. right. Yes. That's where the equality comes yes. in. So as a couple, yeah. you balance each other. Mm -hmm. And you might say, John, this is your, you handle this, because yeah. you have that gift. Mm -hmm. And then... That's how it happens. Yeah. But so we have to know what we bring to the table. Yes. When we bring certain things to the table, my lack supplies, my abundance supplies her lack, and her abundance supplies my lack. Mm -hmm. we balance and when I recognize, balance. when we recognize where we are strong and weak, mm -hmm. yes. then we could know what we yes. can or cannot handle. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And I know, Jason, you have something on forgiveness too, but I want to just touch on that just a second. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking about strengths and weaknesses. You were a manager for a number of years, yeah. a number of years back even, yes. in the yes. restaurant business. And I know that you managed, I don't know how many people. It was about 50 something, 60 yeah. people under they, A lot of people. And they all had their strengths, didn't they? They did. And their weaknesses. And I, it helped me learn my strengths and my weaknesses <laughs> too. <That's> right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But you try and then build on those. Okay, so so-and-so, I don't know how this works. I've not really been in the restaurant business, but I know that I've seen some people that can chop so fast, I would chop my fingers off. Yes. <laughs> like, shh, shh. Yeah, but they yeah. So, you know, you put that person obviously in charge of chopping stuff, chopping mm -hmm. vegetables or something, but then you may have someone that's really good with people. 
Yes. But they sure can't chop. They would chop their fingers off like I would chop my fingers <laughs> off. So you're looking for strengths and weaknesses. Absolutely. And I mean, in a restaurant, there's so many moving parts. That's um, true. As with any organization. And so, like you said, there there are some people who are strong in one area, weak in the other. There were a lot of people that were strong in the kitchen, you know, on fry side, mm -hmm. um, dropping things that need to go in the fryer. Mm -hmm. uh, there were people that were strong in prep like prepping for the day and getting that knocked out fast. There were people who had great personalities, were great with the, the guests and mm -hmm. stuff up front. We made them servers or hosts. Um, so everybody has their place. And it's just like it's good. with church or with, yeah. with the body of Christ, um, everybody's been blessed with gifts, mm -hmm. that the Lord has blessed us with gifts and talents that we're to use for Him. So, I mean, when you look at work or you look at uh, spiritual, life. Mm -hmm. um, the two go hand in hand with, mm -hmm. with the, the uti utilizing your gifts um, mm -hmm. to work together. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's nice. Oh, that's Was that a saying you had? <laughs> yes, I've, I've heard it somewhere and I just, nice. it stuck with me. But Another it works for Dare to Dream. It sure does. Absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Another one is that uh, one of my old bosses said, you know, what gets measured gets moved. Mm -hmm. um, oh. One of the things now how that could translate into the spiritual realm is that uh, when you write down your prayer requests, that's being measured. You know, you're writing down your prayer request and then you're looking at how God has answered those prayer requests yes. Yes. and you're writing that down. So you're seeing how the Lord is continually working in your life. Mm. You know, his no may be the answer, yeah. Yeah. but he's got our best interest at heart. So, I mean, when you look at uh, that's, and that's one oh, that's thing great. that I, I, I pray and I, I want to get better at is looking at all kinds of different situations and scenarios and finding the spiritual application in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good because they're all around us, aren't we? We're surrounded mm -hmm. with that yes. on a daily basis. Yeah. So I know during the break you were uh, talking also about a great scripture and of course uh, you didn't hear it, we heard it here <laughs> during that uh, two minute break. So Jason, yeah. there's a great scripture that you had regard, um, regarding forgiveness. Yes, and uh, this this section or segment says mm. dealing with a sinning brother. It's found in Matthew chapter 18 ah. verse oh, 15. Yes. Wow, Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. Because we talked about, mm. I just want to pause for yeah, a moment. We talked about when I have the hard heart or when it's difficult yeah. for me to forgive. Mm. But what if like Angie, you had brought this story up at the end of last, mm. uh, before the end of the last hour, right. um, about how you were, this person came against you. So here you were the person being wounded and you chose in that respect yeah. To keep quiet, mm. to not say anything, and how that diffuses that. But this is another principle that yeah. we're called upon to do when there's difficulty between us and That's brothers good. and sisters. Yes, and this isn't always easy, <laughs> but God will help us. Amen. All right, beginning in verse 15 of chapter 18 in Matthew. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Mm. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Yeah. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Hmm. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth or loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So it gives, it's a process. It is. You know, yeah. it's, it's a step process. If this doesn't work, try this. If mm -hmm. that doesn't work, try, try mm -hmm. that. You know, you got to make sure that you do yeah. everything that you can do mm -hmm to try and reconcile reconcile mm -hmm. one on one starting one on one yes. pastor probably in the church you've We've seen it the other that. way around where it's gone whoosh, right oh. to the top instead of one on one to start with and it's unfortunate and mm -hmm. even when people call me and say pastor I'm upset with so and so yeah I say well have you spoken to them right because mm -hmm. if I'm the first one to address an issue to another church member that is an issue between two church members it's like bringing the sledgehammer down <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. saying yeah. to Danny yeah. Danny could you go ahead and um, handle somebody that's not being nice to mm -hmm. me yeah. Did you speak to them? It's like you don't bring the company head down on somebody. Oh, you don't yeah. send Jill and Greg to deal with mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. unless you have followed the Matthew 18 principle. Yes. Mm -hmm. True. And this principle is designed to let people know you don't, you don't, you don't hit as I've seen the cartoon before. 
this is a funny illustration, but it's true. You don't try to kill a fly on your brother's forehead with a hammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would hurt. They said, well, I was trying to kill a fly, but yeah. you <laughs> knocked mm -hmm. him out. Yeah. You got to follow these principles because they are redemptive. That's mm -hmm. the key. They are redemptive. Mm -hmm. Redemption meaning don't feel, and, and the other part, and I like this, Angie has a quote here that oh, I want you to read that before good. I finish the statement here. Well, I was thinking that when someone offends you, you go to them, as the Bible says. Mm -hmm. You don't go tell everyone else. You go to them and you leave it after you've you settled it between one another. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you, you move on and, in the Lord. And don't you think that's mm -hmm. what we often do? Yes. Instead go of tell. going to the person, yes. as God calls us to do, yes. what do we do? We tell everybody else. Mm -hmm. we see, did, you hear what, did, you see, did you hear what Greg did to me last mm -hmm. week? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting. I wonder why we do that as human beings. Are we no. trying to find sympathy or someone just to maybe take our side? You know what? Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. yeah. Greg really did for me. Yeah, that's true. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. But there's a quote yes. here. Um, it's in my remnant Bible from Desire of Ages 441. And it says, but it is to the wrongdoer himself that we are to present the wrong. We are not to make it a matter of comment and criticism among mm. ourselves, wow. not even after it is told to the church. We mm. are, at are we at liberty to repeat it to others. A knowledge of the faults of Christians will be only a cause of stumbling to the unbelieving world. Wow. And by dwelling upon these things, we ourselves can receive only harm. Mm. For it is by beholding that we become changed. Mm. Mm. Right. So don't tell wow. everyone. You know what? Uh, that's great. That's a great quote. Where does that come from? Desire of Ages 441. It is huge. Mm. That's huge. I know we want to go to the music with I got a yeah, comment yeah. on this. Please. Yeah. This is where I really would appeal to Christians, whatever your denomination. Mm -hmm. Don't take your church's laundry to the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Don't take your denominational challenges to the community. Sometimes I've heard people say that my wife and I have been present when we've heard other people talk badly about the church, yes. mm -hmm. talk badly about administration, talk badly about leadership, talk badly about the conference. Mm -hmm. And this person is not even a Christian. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're just kind of leaning on the sideline. They're, they're in our community, they're in our circle. But they might say, you know that so-and-so, and they'll mention the person's name. Or they'll put it on Facebook. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> yeah. honey, you hit yeah. social and media. And everybody will know. Yeah. Yeah. All their business, yeah. all their dirty laundry. Yeah. You don't do that. Yes. Oh, no, that's a good point. Mention that because right. these... It makes the church look so bad. Your, your mm -hmm. fellowship, your, all your business is between you and God, that's not right. between Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And even if you have... Into, and, and we're living in this communication age, which communication is becoming wrongly used a tool in the hand of the enemy mm -hmm. because people might know and I don't know if you know this but what you put out there on the media yeah. you might delete it in an hour but somebody shared it yes <laughs> and it's gone it's you like beating a, it back. it's mm -hmm. like beating a feathered pillow on a windy day you're not going to gather all those feathers <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. so don't injure your reputation don't insult the cause of god don't bring, don't bring um, uh, injury to the church, yeah. Yeah. and don't do that to your brother or the even the person you just don't like. Yeah. Follow Matthew 18, Good. and what I've discovered, my wife and I've discovered, it's in our own relationship and mm. with other people. Mm. Yeah. When you deal with it one to one, one, to one. Mm. Mm -hmm. you could bury it together. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And it's dead and over it's done. with. Yeah. Rather than, because you know what happens if I fix something. Like if I talk badly about Jill, mm. and Jill and I, if I said something bad to somebody else about Jill, and Jill mm -hmm. and I fixed it, I got to still deal with that seed I planted that's in their right. head. Yeah. That's and correct. That's unjust because yeah. I've given that's them right. a terrible attitude or opinion mm -hmm. about Jill, mm -hmm. and they, now they have to deal with that. Right. Mm -hmm. So El, El might also says, don't share your troubles yeah. with other people because God has not designed them yes. to carry your issues. Mm -hmm. So then I think there also now we have that transition then to God because we got to take these things to God, right? Yes. That's our communication and our relationship mm -hmm. to God. And I know we want to talk about that too because there's also a two-way communication with God. It's not just us saying, okay, God, this, and okay, God, I need that, and thank you for this. Mm -hmm. There's also a point where we have to be still, right? Oh, yeah. 
and know that He is God. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's go to some music because uh, time Perfect. is uh, yeah, we, getting along quickly. We will do that. Uh, we have Samuel Campbell we with do. us again. Fantastic. Praise the Lord. And the song he will be doing this time is actually one of my favorites. Mm, I mm. love this song, My Tribute. Amen. Wow, thank you, Sam Ocampo. I tell you, he is just a talented. God has given him the talents and he is Amen. using them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, what a great song. My tribute, and I tell you, we all owe everything to Jesus Christ. We thank him for, his, um, for Jesus and his sacrifice, for the gift of salvation. When I hear somebody play the piano like that, I realize in my own heart that I better not even begin to start piano <laughs> lessons because there's no way. 
I would even get to that point. So I'll sit back and That's just wife, enjoy. Somebody has to be in the audience. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in the audience, Pastor. <laughs> so this is just amazing. We've been talking about relationships, uh, building relationships, marriage, friends, coworkers, mm -hmm. uh, in the church. Mm -hmm. And it's just been great. We've been talking a little bit about uh, the forgiveness aspect in relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, we should actually do a program probably on we forgiveness. Because, boy, mm -hmm. when you start unpackaging it, it just mm. seems to get bigger and bigger. And there's so many aspects to it. But I know, Pastor, uh, you have something else you want to share regarding that, and I think we're kind of moving into now conflict resolution, because yeah. in relationships, yeah. you know, we have a great marriage, but, you know, we don't always maybe see eye to eye on something, and so how do you deal with that? I mean, that's real life. You should tell them what Dad oh, told yeah. you before we got married. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> so, great father-in-law, great, uh, yeah, I consider them mom and dad, and Jill's parents, yeah, yeah. they're great. The uh, doctor and Mrs. Penny, uh, just, just great folks, and um, so we were riding in the car, he was driving, this is before we were married, in Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, it could be awkward, but it wasn't. You know, I'm sitting in the passenger seat, he's sitting there, and he's giving me a little bit of um, counsel, future son-in-law. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I'm sitting there, and he said, um, he said, now it's very important that you know how to handle conflict. You know, in my mind, you know, just a little naive, I'm thinking, yeah, conflict, yeah. <laughs> nah, we're, you know, there's no conflict whatsoever. He said, now, he said, I want to tell you this. This is very serious. So, okay, then I straightened up. Okay, yeah. And he gave me some great advice on conflict resolution, which has just been fantastic mm -hmm. in our um, marriage, but also in my relationships with others. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, yeah, just, it was great counsel. But anyway, yeah, when Jill and I have a disagreement, <laughs> we don't, you know, shout, yell, carry on, slam things down. We just, we'll talk about it. And I appreciate that um, mm -hmm. in you that we'll just sit down, talk about, you know, we may not see eye to eye and actually come to an agreement together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, that's really important. So yeah, that's that little story on before we got married, but what <laughs> invaluable, um, boy, information and counsel he gave to me, that's Amen. for sure. Anyway, Pastor, conflict resolution, you have something to say regarding that and of course forgiveness. Well, the one thing we have to keep in mind, when you read uh, Ezekiel 36, yes. mm. I will give you a new, I will yeah. give you, I will yeah. give you. Mm -hmm. What that what that alludes to is that we can't do it. The Lord has to That's do right. it. That's key. That's mm -hmm. right. We can't do it. In, in the book Temperance, page 112, paragraph 3, this is a quote, and this is about the only thing we can do is choose. Mm -hmm. We can choose to resolve a matter between each other, mm -hmm. but God gives the power when we That's make right. the choice. That's right. We can choose to handle a, res a, a conflict between brother and sister, mm -hmm. but God now gives us the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And here's what Ellen White says. God has given us the power of choice. Mm -hmm. It is ours to exercise. That's good. But here's what she says. We, can we cannot change our hearts. We cannot control our thoughts, our impulses, our affections. We cannot make ourselves pure, fit for God's service, but we can choose to serve God. Amen. We can mm -hmm. give Him our will. Then He will work in us to will and to Amen. do according to His own good pleasure. That's right. Philippians 1.6. Mm -hmm. Thus our whole nature will be brought under the control of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if a person says, I can't do it, I agree. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. When somebody says, I can't forgive him. I agree. It, it, it totally catches them off guard. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. You're right. Mm -hmm. God does. But if you does. say, are you willing? I always say, are right. you willing? That's right. Do you want it to be resolved? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Let's ask for the power. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God will do it. Yes. I that, can do all things through Christ, through Christ who, who strengthens strength. me. That takes a lot of stress out of it. Do you know that? It does. Yeah. Yeah. When you can't there, do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because I know, I've learned, I've learned in sometimes in the school of hard knocks, when I try to resolve something with... Okay, I've been around long enough. I'm smart enough. I have skills. When I try to do a school of hard knocks, it says to me, no, you're going to hurt your head yeah. again. Mm -hmm. This is going to be another knock. Yeah. Let the Lord do it. Mm -hmm. And when we turn it over to Him, we have seen powerful things oh. that God has blessed us with. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jason. Right. And yeah. Oh, go ahead. You were going to I was going to ask my wife, any testimonies, son? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> We'll keep it between us. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's I like that. Answer. There we go. Very nice. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the type of person, like, I, I do not like conflict. I'm very easygoing. I'm very laid back. You know, I, I just don't like conflict. So I'll try and avoid conflict if possible. Yeah. But over the years, I've learned, I mean, you can't just sweep things under the rugs. You have, uh, yeah. under the rug, you have to talk about it mm -hmm. and, and get it out there. I think that it's important to 
know who you're dealing with and how they respond yes. to that conflict. Are you dealing with somebody who needs to go for a walk for a little while and cool off and collect their thoughts before talking? Or can you guys just sit down and iron things out um, Good point. right away? I, I think that's very important in resolving conflict and also listening you know, listening yeah. with the intent and purpose of understanding the other individual, not to just prove a point. That's a good point. Um, those, those things seem to be important. You're ready for uh, marriage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the Lord send the bride. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's getting closer, but we could tell him now, and this is some counsel we give to yes. the single people, mm -hmm. Jay, also, you could, you could read all the books on earth, mm. When you get behind the steering wheel, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Marriage, so that's true. You're on a different road. Mm -hmm. You might say, "They never told me about this road." Mm. Yeah. You, as you, am I telling you the yeah. truth? It's from experience. Well, just like me, I thought, you know, being naive. Oh, we oh, won't yeah. have much conflict or any exactly. conflict. Well, yeah, you know, it's real life. But we you know what? The, conflict. You know what? The amazing. I'm sorry. Mm. The amazing thing to me is that before we got married. Now mm. this is just telling on us. Before we got married, I always thought, well, I'm verbal and I like to talk and I'll, I'll do great with communication and if there's any conflict and Greg's he likes to talk too but a little quieter you could say than I am initially and so I thought oh I'm gonna be the one who handles conflict and this is pride <laughs> coming in right, right, and, right and Greg's gonna whatever and you know what I discovered I'm the one who doesn't handle conflict well mm -hmm. and he's the one who God has used to teach me Man. how to deal with conflict I think our first year of marriage I would think well a Christian shouldn't struggle with this, so something that happened bothered me, mm -hmm. but yet it shouldn't bother me, so I'll stuff it, and I won't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon he'd be like, Jilly, what's wrong? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> but you're really not. It's one of you're those right. little pinky things yes. that needs to be discussed. And then he'd say, well, let's just talk about it. And mm. I'd say, I don't even know what I'm thinking or feeling. And then learn to learn who you are and how to process that and how to deal with conflict. So thank you, sweetheart. Mm. God has used you. Well, it's been a journey together. In and I my appreciate life. She's been patient that. with me. That's no, great. he's been patient with me. <laughs> Go ahead, Another thing is like it's important to address conflict because just like a pressure cooker where it just builds up yeah. and builds up and builds up then you mm -hmm. flip that little thing it just yeah. don't hold it in you can't hold it in let things fester mm -hmm. because that will affect your uh, mm -hmm. relationship in a negative way someone here mentioned too as far as uh, just listening because sometimes mm -hmm. we become defensive you know oh, so someone yeah. brings something up oh, oh yeah. boy <laughs> I'm defending myself right here I got a wicked left hook you know yeah. <laughs> you know so it's good just to say okay you know what take a breath we just, yeah, what does this person have to say? And really listen, because sometimes we don't always listen. Yeah. We're thinking in our minds, okay, this mm -hmm. is my defense, this is my defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for him to lower his guard. So yeah, I'm exactly. Not gonna... No. no. Yeah. And communication is huge in this sense. Mm -hmm. I, I teach communication. I'm not a therapist, mm -hmm. but as a, a, a relationship coach. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've still learned in all these years of coaching relationships, my wife have taught me things that my relationship coaching hasn't taught me. That's mm. Because this is where God works in our own hearts. Yeah. Um, and I've also learned not to be husband. If you're a counselor, don't be your wife's counselor. <laughs> <laughs> wife, if you're okay. a therapist, don't be your husband's therapist. It doesn't yeah, so work. So true. Yeah. <clears throat> be husband, be wife. Yes. Mm. But um, I've learned to, in the, in the sense of interpersonal relationship with counseling people, you have to be willing. You do. You have to be That's willing right. to listen. Mm. Mm. So I've taught people when they are in that heated moment. Or when you're counseling. When I, I say, don't listen to just wait to jump in, mm -hmm. as Jay was saying. But say to them, if, for example, say something to me, Jill. Whatever. Today so I, is a beautiful day. Am I hearing you say today is a beautiful day? But I'm struggling. Okay. Am I hearing you say today is a beautiful day, but you're struggling? Mm -hmm. Am I hearing you say, so often, we often say, am I hearing you say that this is a difficult day, but it's a beautiful day, but you're struggling? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so then as I, as I acknowledge what you've said, yeah. mm, I can now address it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't acknowledge. Now, when you start that, don't be robot. You can be robotic yeah. by doing right. that all the time. And, and after a while, fake. it'll irritate your mate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you stop saying, am I hearing you say, am I hearing you say, oh, okay, I'm <laughs> done with that. Did you hear me? <laughs> Are you hearing me say this? <laughs> it gets to a point where you, you practice it, but then it becomes natural. Mm. Because the key would be, and many people 
they argue their point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we were dealing with a couple, mm -hmm. and we always do that. Sometimes in conflict, people have added, a, I call it the value mm. to what they are, what, mm. they're, what they are, um, mm -hmm. they've added value to mm. something mm -hmm. that is not necessarily a value. So I call it a scale of one to 10. Now fo follow this for example. Okay. Say you and Jill have a conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for Jill, what just happened is a nine. Right. What just happened is a three to you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it's not a big deal to him, oh. but it nine. would be to me. Mm -hmm. So balance it out, nine and three is 12. It's a six. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. You, you, you average it out. It's not the end of the world, nor is it a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's right about in the middle somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you bring it down. So I say to the mm -hmm. wife, you need to ratchet that down, and the husband, you need to add more importance to mm -hmm. it because it isn't significant. So you learn, and then, and then when I hear them still arguing their point, but, but, but what I said, honey, that you didn't hear mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, but you, you, you didn't hear me. Uh, but I, I heard you, but you didn't hear me. Right. And I say, guys, right now, you guys want to win the argument. Mm -hmm. You don't want to win the person. That's right. mm -hmm. So what's more important in relationships? Persons, absolutely. Oh, now, but here's the flip side of that. Mm -hmm. But some people might think that they lost the argument. Mm -hmm. So should I lose the argument to win the person? That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But what's most important? And when you learn that the winning of the person is more important than winning the argument, mm -hmm. here's what you come up with. You come up with a spiritual compromise that can make this relationship function mm -hmm. healthily. So you'll say, I'll use you and Jill as an example. Uh, Greg might say, Jill, I want you to cut the grass today with the tractor. Jill said, I am not a mm -hmm. tractor person. You <laughs> want me to run over somebody with that thing? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, but it's okay, if I do the tractor, you cook dinner. Greg mm. said, me do what? Yeah. <laughs> you want to burn dinner? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> okay. so, so, so Jill says, you know, Greg, I want to teach you how to cook your favorite meal. And Jill, you know that tractor? I want to show you what it actually does. Mm, yeah. So we've actually done that to each other. Can yeah. I tell them those ones? Go ahead. You know, I bought my wife a drone. Oh. Which a drone is one of those. Because she's always said yeah. she wanted one, yeah. but I bought her a, 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 a small a, little. A small spark, a DJI spark. Okay. And she says, this is really a guy thing. I said, no, it isn't. I'm going to show you how to do it. And when you really get past all the mechanics of it, you can have a lot of fun. Mm. So that's where we are. Here's the point, and I'll end on this. What's important to you should not be unimportant to you. Mm. And what's right. unimportant to you should not be unimportant to Jill. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. See, learn how to get to that point of compromise. Yeah. And this where the conflict becomes less of a conflict because mm -hmm. one thing is predominant. You both want to resolve it. Mm. But yes. don't resolve it by wanting to win your argument or wanting to win your argument. Mm. Mm. Come to a spiritual compromise mm. where you function on a healthy level. Win, mm -hmm. the, person. Yeah. win the person. Say it again. Win the person. 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 And I've, I've had to apologize so many times to my wife. Mm. That's apologize to you too. Mm -hmm. Oh. So it's back <laughs> We've apologized to you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm taking mental Good. notes over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preparing for the future. I'm getting my free counseling yeah, right now. Right? Yeah. Humble yourself. But the Apologize. same principles right. apply in any relationship. Any relationship. I mean, we're just, talking marriage just right. at this moment, mm -hmm. but it applies to any. any relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That conflict resolution. Yeah. We all deal with conflict. Mm -hmm. Workplace, we're, church, oh, yeah. wherever it is. And then we can, God can work to resolve that. And I think so, you know, Jason, too, you know, it's not just about winning an argument mm -hmm. or trying trying to convince someone of my point of view because I also feel that uh, someone else actually what they're saying actually should be something maybe I should consider because mm -hmm. you know what actually you're right mm -hmm. the direction I was going was not right actually you have a much better idea mm -hmm. so that's one of the key things too because we can hinder ourselves by being so stuck on what yes. we want to do and to be honest with you our idea is not the best mm -hmm. theirs is and it's okay to say you know what Man, you know, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And for you to actually, I've even told my crew this as well, because, you know, we different opinions on how to do different things, and it's great, because I love ideas and options. Mm -hmm. So just because we decide not to go someone's direction doesn't mean yours is wrong. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or yes. that this one is better. Exactly. You, you know, so some people can take it like, oh, man, they didn't choose my direction. That means they're not, pff, my idea was mm -hmm. junk. No, that's not true mm -hmm. at all. We choose a direction, but then the key is then we all support that mm -hmm. and don't mm -hmm. talk and backbite mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know what, the mm -hmm. church decided to do this, but, you know, I don't support that at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, like, ridiculous. No, you know what, we're all on board. We're a team, mm -hmm. and if we tear down the team, the church, your coworkers, um, your family, 
all it does is cause weakness yeah. within whatever unit you're in. And it accomplishes sa Satan's goal of yeah. um, oh, that's good. Of yeah. dividing yeah. and conquering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tearing yeah, that's down right. the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. What if we okay. turn this for a moment yeah, to our good. relationship with God? Oh, We've been good. talking mm -hmm. some about marriage and with others, but what if we look, I know we're getting toward the end of the second hour, at our right, relationship with God. What if someone's saying there's conflict? in my relationship with God because I don't mm. understand him and I don't know who he is and and how can you even love someone if you don't know someone mm -hmm. so what would you all say in a situation like that well I would say have I'd ask first you know have you taken the time to get to know get to God know. have you spent mm -hmm. time in his word Great have you question. Spent time in prayer yes. you know even when witnessing to people you know some people are so doctrinally sound that they just pre present doctrine mm -hmm. and rules and laws and mm -hmm. all this stuff, but they don't introduce the person to Christ and who, mm -hmm. who Christ is. Yes. So, you know, I would tell them that, you know, the God I serve loves you and loves me very much, so much so that, you know, God in John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not uh, perish, but have everlasting life. You know, imagine sacrificing your son mm. Mm. for a bunch of people that mistreat him on a daily basis, that hate him, that do things that crucify him afresh. Like, oh, yeah. it, that, the God that we serve is so loving and mm. caring and desires yeah. a personal relationship with us. And even in the, the beginning of time, he created man mm -hmm. on the sixth day. Everything was in place. That's right. So he created us, he creates us, and he sustains us, and he provides for us. And he, it's amazing and such a blessing that he desires such a, a deep yeah. personal relationship with each and every one of us us. Mm -hmm. So I would tell that person, take the time to get to know who God really is because the world is trying to paint a picture of God yeah. that is misrepresenting his character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you got to take the time and communicate with him. Mm -hmm. So Jason, let me just ask you this, if you don't mind sharing. So in your own personal life, because mm -hmm. you know, your relationship with God has, has been obvious, you know, it's growth. Yes. And Praise so in your own personal life, how have you uh, spent that time with God or how do you spend your time to get to know God more? Mm -hmm. Well, part of it is, is studying the Word. Um, I get emails every single day from, I think it's the Ellen, Ellen White Estate. Me too. Um, and mm -hmm. I get those devotionals and I read those and then um, I'll, I'll often reflect on where I used to be, you know, mm -hmm. and what God's delivered me from. That's good. Wow. Um, and, and just take a look at how many things that He spared me from time after time. And I look at times where I failed God and He's forgiven me. Yeah. You know, I look at those times yeah. when, <laughs> I'm trying not to get all teary. That's all oh, right. That's okay. Because, you know, that, that type of love is, oh, yeah. is just mm -hmm. oh. unexplainable. Yeah. There's no words that can adequately describe yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how much God loves us. Mm -hmm. So I just, I contemplate on that. I think about what He's delivered Amen. me from, Amen. what He's spared me from, Amen. and yeah. how He continues to sustain me. When I don't know where something's coming from, God provides. Mm -hmm. When I'm going through something, God's right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about Daniel, and if, if I oh, could yeah. just read this ever so Please. quickly. If we go to Daniel chapter 3, uh, yeah. verse 19. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you may be familiar with this story of, of these guys that were th thrown into the fiery furnace. Oh, that's right. Okay. So Daniel chapter 3, verse 19. And then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Mm -hmm. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the fire 
burning fiery furnace. Hmm. The king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, mm -hmm. and, he, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Do we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? <laughs> they answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Wow. Hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, mm -hmm. come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, uh, administrators, governors, and kings, counselors, uh, king's counselors gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Yes. Right. The hair of, of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Amen. That's the God I serve. Amen. 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 That's Beautiful. Huge. That's powerful. It is. Yeah. And you know, thank you, Jay, for bringing mm. that out yeah, because powerful. a lot of times you got to simmer that in. you gotta, yeah, you got to soak that in because yeah. God is with us in the fire. Thank yeah. you. Praise so God. So often we want to be delivered mm -hmm. from the fire, mm -hmm. but we discover the power of God's deliverance in the fire mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we pointed out here, and this is so important to bring this back to God, because any relationship without God is not really a relationship. That's right. Because right. mm -hmm. if, if we're walking in the light as you begin, mm -hmm. yes. we're walking in the light with Him. That's yes. right. Walking in the furnace with Him. Mm -hmm. Our marriage, mm -hmm. our interpersonal relationships, our church relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important if a person doesn't know God, if I could give them one simple scripture in the Bible. You know, John 3.16 is powerful. Mm -hmm. But they say, well, what does He think about me? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. 29.11. Oh, oh, yes. that. Look at, read that from, I want a sweet mm. woman's voice to read this. <laughs> Jeremiah 29.11. I'm talking so much. There it is right there. You have it in pink. I want this. Th listen how beautiful. If you want to find out, because somebody might say, I don't know what he thinks about me. Yeah. Mm. This scripture answers it. Yeah, yeah, what God thinks about me. What yeah. does he think yeah. about yeah. me? Mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Mm -hmm. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. That's a promise. Amen. That's so, what he wants to give us. So, so what's God think about me? I mean, I've done so many things wrong, yes. but I know the thoughts I think towards you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been so messed up, but I know the thoughts I think towards mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. He's not saying I think these thoughts toward the good. No. <clears throat> That's right. But if a person wants yeah, to know how God thinks, he says, my relationship with you is, and people talk about unconditional love, mm -hmm. only God's love. Only. Now, I want to say that carefully, mm -hmm. because God's love comes from a God who is the same all the time. That's the That's only right. thing. Yesterday He's always the same. Mm -hmm. But He blesses us on condition. Mm -hmm. But He doesn't love us on condition. That's right. God so loved the world. world. Mm -hmm. He blesses us conditionally. Mm -hmm. But, but His love. love us conditionally. Amen. Mm -hmm. We tend to add conditions to our love. We do. Boy, I tell you what, that adds hope. Do you know that to somebody that's yeah. viewing right now, Pastor? Why don't you talk to them right now? Because they could be just, yeah, without hope. So that actually is hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God loves you no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you know that we say, mm. "Come as you are." Yes, that's true. But the Lord never leaves you the way He finds. Boy, you. praise mm. God for that. Mm. I know that. Mm. Jay, you know that. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. I know it too. Mm. Absolutely. We know it too. That's yeah. right. Never. So you might see us here in suits, but there was a time I was in a club mm. in the city, in the streets of New York City, party, gambling, pool hustling, mm. living the life of the nightlife. Wow. There was a time that Jay was. I don't want to tell his story. He could tell his own story. <laughs> But we know where we were. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we know where we are. Yeah. That's right. Praise the Lord. And we don't sit where we sit because of anything we've accomplished. No. We sit where we sit because of what He has accomplished. Mm -hmm. He had a relationship plan long before our seed was ever conceived. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like He said to Jeremiah, before you were conceived in your mother's womb. I knew, I knew you. you. I knew you. Mm -hmm. yep. That blows me away. I know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That blew yeah. me away. I could not, and I'm going to testify a little bit here. Please. Please. I could not on any given day, and I now see the engine called 3ABN. It's an engine. It's a, it's a ministry yes, of blessings. Mm -hmm. I could not, we could not on any given day orchestrate. orchestrate it where we are today. Mm -hmm. None of us. Mm -hmm. We could not have sent any amount of letters, because I've seen people do that. <laughs> we could not have sent any amount of appeals oh, resumes, and begs uh, or resumes nothing. to get where we are today. But to think that God thought about me and Angie before you were conceived, we when we were little kids, yeah. 
you in England, Greg Jill, in Brooklyn, Jason, all of us. Yep. When you were little, when you were little, yeah. Mm -hmm. He thought about us. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? You can't think too long on that. No, you can't. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That he loved us so much. That's oh, right. yeah. That he looked beyond my faults. Mm -hmm. That's right. And saw my need. Amen. Praise the Lord. And in the middle of our relationship, mumbling and stumbling and mm -hmm. messing up, mm -hmm. as we all have. That's we have. Right. God said, but I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I know the plans, and yeah. my plans are not going to be interrupted by your lack of no. sight. Yeah, Because when you come out of your furnace, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you know that it's not, not even the smell of smoke is going to no. be on I know. Yeah. You, i got to preach that sermon completely differently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we've been in the fire. Yeah. We've been in the fire in our marriage. Mm -hmm. We've been in the fire in our relationship with, with other church members. Mm -hmm. But Greg, you said something mm -hmm. I want to add right here. Please. If somebody even says, Pastor, you said something that hurt me, I'm going to add legitimacy to that. Because yeah. something I have done somewhere has caused them to feel that I said something or did something. Yeah. I don't want to say, am I asking for forgiveness? Well, if I have. Right. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to say, brother, sister, tell me what I've said or what you, yes. what you heard me say that has injured you. And I've learned in that respect mm. yeah. to not even fight fire with fire, but to be yeah. yeah. So I'm just praising God right now. Mm. that he has thought about us so much mm -hmm. that he put us here and you know why he's put you where he has put you mm. why he's put Jay and Angie and I where he's put us that in his relationship with us we could extend to others Amen. in your marriage That's right. as a child or a parent mm -hmm. as a person who is not yet married wondering what the future holds but right here <laughs> <laughs> you know as a couple of 15 years or 35 or maybe 50 That's right. Right. whatever the case may be the Lord had thoughts for us a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are right now, mm -hmm. the purpose of this program is to say, God wants to have a relationship with That's you. Right. Now Amen. we're going to add some more components. Wow. Yes. But he wants a relationship with you and you'll never know how powerful your life could be unless you open up your heart and say, Lord, be willing. Say it again, honey. Be willing. One more be willing. time. Be willing. Mm. Be willing. Wow. Mm -hmm. If you're willing, you will eat of the fruit of the mm -hmm. land. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, you don't need to know what the future is, but you just need to know that God has thoughts and plans for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what's Ephesians? He's able to do exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly, abundantly above, above all, all that you ask That's or something. think. Uh -huh. I know we're living that dream. <laughs> yes. well, Dave, what's Dar uh, uh, Daryl Marshall's song? Mm. Drinking the from the saucer because the cup is overflowing. Yeah. Yeah. Every time he sings that song, mm. <laughs> I've never heard anybody sing it, but every time Daryl sings that song, I always come to tears mm. because I'm drinking from my saucer. Mm. Mm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, and we want to encourage you at home too. You know, mm -hmm. God has plans for you, and where you are is where God wants you to bloom. You yes, know, and to prosper because right. it's easy to look over on the other side and say, wow, they have this and they yeah. have that and I wish I were doing that. <laughs> right. Wow, what a powerful ministry they have. Do you know what? You can minister right mm, where you are. Right. Going back, Angie, you read that again. Jeremiah 29, oh, I love 11. That. It's just <laughs> a great scripture. And as we were talking, this is hope. I mean, this is hope. Yes. God has a purpose for you. Amen. And you're here on this earth for a purpose. Yes, so again, for please. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Yeah, this is God saying this. Is he saying that? Mm. Says the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Praise God. To give you mm. a future mm. and a hope. Mm. Amen. And thank the other one. Wow, good joke. I was just going to say mm. thank you, Pastor John. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Mm. I know that the Lord mm. used what you just shared there to minister and touch so many people at home. It reminds me of the scripture, John 6, 37, Jesus speaking, whoever comes to me, I will. In King James says, in no wise I like that. cast out. Mm. Come Praise to Jesus. Lord. Come Amen. to Jesus as you are wow. right now Amen. with your junk, with your sins, with whatever's going on in your life, even with your confusion about who he is. Mm -hmm. He can right. take all that. His shoulders are big. He can take your fear. He can take your anger. He can take your shame. He can take mm -hmm. your brokenness mm -hmm. and he will in turn change your life, mm -hmm. transform you, fill you up because he loves you, because mm. of the plans that he has Amen. for your life. What an incredible God mm. that we serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
sorry. I, I think when the Bible says, he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, I think that's after we get to heaven, after we realize how much yeah. he loved us. I think they're going to be like 38 billion people crying all over heaven. Yeah. First thousand years. First th <laughs> and he's going to say, okay. <laughs> Because we are going to be so overwhelmed yeah. oh, my. Oh. By, the, by, the, by, the, by the love that we don't understand. That's right. By the love we don't understand. And, 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 um, and this is why when we go through challenges in life relationship, mm -hmm. that text that Angie just read helps me understand the other text. And we know that all things work together for That's good right. mm. to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Romans 8, 28. Yeah. So when we know that, we could go through those difficulties mm -hmm. because he has a plan, he has a future, he has a hope. Mm -hmm. So you could go through that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that in the time we have left, maybe yes. we want to just touch on so much. transparency, yes. honesty. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. thank yes. you. Also hindrance, you'd mentioned that. Uh, hindrance is another thing to relationships we have to touch on too. Yeah. What's the hindrance we talked about? God, Pride. I'll, I'll say it again. Pride. Pride. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's huge. I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle too. I don't want to back down on something. I mm -hmm. yeah, want to uh, stand on my ground mm -hmm. and not move. But yeah. You ever had a, you ever had, you ever, have you ever had a pride moment, Jill? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've had many pride moments. I wasn't nodding my head in agreement with her. I was thinking about my own life. <laughs> just so you know. That. I saw them go to the two shot and I was nodding my head. So no, I'm like, referring to me. Like, not oh, her. yes. I know my wife has had some issues. I want to straighten that out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Way to clean but, it up. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think in those moments, that's yes. when the Holy Spirit works in our heart. True. I remember one time Greg and I, this is our first year of marriage and I've mm -hmm. shared this before, we had some disagreement and I just thought, oh, he has got to apologize because it's his fault. And mm -hmm. I knew that and mm -hmm. I was right. And I wore that. You know how oh, a woman yeah. can wear that yes. old shoulder? Oh, yes. And Greg said, Jilly, we need to pray. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, I don't want to pray because mm -hmm. God's going to say, Jilly, you got to get rid of that pride. you got to humble yourself. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that, but I knew I should. Mm -hmm. And so we knelt down by the couch and uh, I thought, God, please help Greg to pray first because I'm not about ready to admit it was me. Yes. And it really was me, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And then Greg <laughs> prayed first and he said, God, forgive me. Mm. for not being the husband to Jill that you've called me to be. Wow. And as soon as he said that, now he didn't say that to manipulate me, it was right. just no, no, his no. brokenness before God. But mm. as soon as he said that, God used, the Holy Spirit used that to break my pride yes. and make me willing to say I'm sorry. Amen. Don't you think most conflicts in relationship come back to pride? Wouldn't you say oh, so? Absolutely. Huge. Oh. Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride will bring him low, mm. but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Ooh. That's wow. powerful. Mm -hmm. The humble in spirit. We have had, we have had those moments that you just described, Jill, <laughs> haven't we? Yeah, of course. We've had those moments. I once grabbed my wife's hand and I said, I'm not going to stop praying. Until yeah. something happens. Oh, yeah. mm. yes. And in the wow. middle of our prayer, maybe five or six minutes into the prayer, I would feel her body. Mm. And God break through. Yes. Wow. And there were times she says, she would put her hand on me mm. and pray for me. And I would put my sh head on her shoulder or mm. on her knee as she prays me through. Mm. Yeah. 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 And we would just sit there and just mm. absorb, inhale the moment mm -hmm. where the God brought both of us through yeah. because one interceded for the other. And you know, it's powerful when it comes to pride. Yeah. We have to be willing to intercede for each other. Yes. Good. Because mm. not enough church members willing, are willing to intercede for each other. Some of us are so busy, and I think we just alluded on this maybe at the break. Some of us are so willing to call out everybody else's sin. You know, there are ministries <laughs> that exist just for the purpose of calling out everybody's sin, but mm. theirs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Jay talked about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's a very important thing to look at is when you're looking at different ministries, yeah. that you look at the fruits yeah. that Amen. they're bearing. You that's know, right. The Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. Mm -hmm. So if they're constantly putting other ministries down, putting yeah. the church down, mm -hmm. if they're constantly trying to fault find and all mm -hmm. that stuff, what fruits are they producing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you should look at when you're, when you're examining or, or checking out other ministries. That's right. Mm -hmm. So again, I think we go back to God, take the pride. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Help me to forgive. We're talking about yes. that. Take my heart, God. Yes. Take the pride Amen. out of my life. Amen. What about transparency and honesty? In Matthew 5:37. Hit oh. real quick. Okay. Good. Matthew 5. Matthew 537. Jason, you said it's what? Crucial. 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 Without trust, there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing. That's right. Jill, have, you have it? She does. Let your yes be yes <laughs> and your no, no. <laughs> For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Wow. wow. Transparency. Oof. Yeah. Is it true? Yes. Yes. Make it yes. If it's yes, yes be truthful. Is yes. it true? No. Mm. Let your no be no and let it be honest. And we have at points, I've grown in those areas and sometimes, because you know what happens? Pride makes you fearful. Mm. Fear mm. makes you prideful. Mm. Ooh, that's deep. Oh, Pride that makes again? you fearful. Yeah. Wow. Fear makes you, you prideful. prideful. Mm. And you can't say, yes, it's true. Because it breaks huh. down that pride. Yep. Yeah. Fear makes you prideful, pride makes you fearful. fearful. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the place where God has, has taken your pride and stamped it in the dust out of a willing heart, mm. yes. then you can say, yes, mm. honey. Wow. Oh. Amen. No, honey. I'm going to go to Jason the new Angie, regarding transparency and honesty. Jason, you said a, a bit's a big word. You oh. said it's crucial. Why is yeah. it crucial? It's crucial because it's if you're building, it's like building blocks, right? Okay. You, yeah. you, you know about construction. If you build your foundation on the sand, it's going to fall. Mm. <laughs> That's true. Mm. If you build your house mm. on the rock, it'll stand. Amen. And so if you're not being transparent and honest you're, and you're lying to your spouse or significant other, you're going to ultimately be unhappy because it's not who you mm. really are. True. You're portraying somebody else just mm. to appease that person or that mm. individual. Oh, yeah. Mm. So your, your relationship is going to fail. Mm. Yeah. You know, without with trust, there's nothing. Too. Right. Even with coworkers? Coworkers. Co -workers. Yeah. Church. Yeah. yeah. You have to think about a police officer. Mm. Uh -huh. If he goes out and gets into a dangerous situation, and he can't trust the partner he's with to have his back or her back, he's got nothing. He's in, he's in trouble. Yeah. He's by himself. Very mm -hmm. true. You know. Angie, any thoughts on transparency, honesty, the importance of it in a relationship, any relationship? Yeah, it's, it's good vital. to be transparent with my sisters, my siblings, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, to they know who you are. <laughs> it's true. Mm. Can't hide it, hard No, anything. no. They've been with you all your life, your siblings. Just be transparent. They know when you're lying. <laughs> they say, oh, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Just be truthful. And say, yes, yeah. be honest. Yeah. And so in a, re a marriage relationship, too, mm -hmm. trust is huge. Yeah. That's what it does. It builds trust, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. When you're honest and truthful, mm -hmm. it builds trust. It builds trust, exactly. And I love what you said, honey, about um, say that again. I've never heard you say that yeah, before. Yeah, fear is prideful. prideful. And pride is fearful. fearful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so huge. we have to be willing. And anything that has been damaged in any relationship, by God's grace, it could be repaired. Amen. 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 Wow. Pastor John, Come by Andy, quickly. and Jason, yes. thank you so much. Thank you for sharing from your heart, mm. from your experience, from the Word of God. It's touched my life. Oh, yeah. And yeah, we well. hope and pray that it has touched your life. Mm -hmm. I want to close with a quote here from Ellen White. Mm, great. It says, it is the love of self mm. that brings unrest. Mm. So anytime there's unrest in your life, go to God and Amen. ask Him to remove that self from your life. He wants to mend and heal and restore your relationship. Have a wonderful night. God bless you. Amen. Wow.